Alright guys, welcome. My name is Peter Capel. Today we are going to be talking about how to catch more black drum. Now, the weather down here in Texas has not been the best. Um, we normally get like two or three good fishing days a week. So, in an effort to keep producing content for you guys, I am going to start trying to do some more of these tips, tricks, videos, um, stuff I've learned, questions that you guys ask me. So, please leave down anything you guys are curious about, interested in, leave it down in the comments below and I will, as soon as I can, try to make a video for you guys. And while you're at it, please hit that subscribe button. It means the world to us. Uh, yeah, it means the more, the more we get, the more we can make, the more we can do this full time. For those of you that don't know, I spent 182 days of my life on an icebreaker in Antarctica. But, I digress, you guys want to learn about Black Trump. Hopefully that little video montage helped you out. Now you've probably, if you've been pulling on the flats long enough, you've undoubtedly seen these guys. Um, the smaller ones, the juveniles, when they're around five pounds, you can mistake them for sheep's head. They'll get the same black and white stripes as sheep's head. Black drum, I like the challenge of them. I don't think that they are as easy to catch as a redfish, but they're definitely not as hard to catch as a sheep's head. There's definitely a trick to catching them, and once you kind of figure out, figure that stuff out, I think it makes them a lot easier. Now, luckily for you, I'm going to walk you through what I do on the skiff when we're trying to catch black drum. All right, first and foremost, location. Where are you going to find these guys? Generally, we don't go out looking for black drum, um, but we do have areas where we know they are more likely going to be at. Um, one of the things that I will recommend is if you see black drum in an area, make a journal entry, a phone entry, something about where you saw them, the time of year, kind of the conditions, because it is very likely that they will come back to that same location. Now, if you're going out and you're trying to find them or you want some clues as to whether or not they might be in area, um, some of the things that I look for are softer bottom with a mix of vegetation and like the sand, not sand pockets that you're looking for trout in, but more like a muddy vegetation kind of mix. Oftentimes we're gonna find them, we see them on the skiff in water that's a bit cloudy. So you can kind of make out shadows on the bottom, you can kind of make out the bottom. Um, in this water condition, normally what the fish are gonna look like is you're just going to see kind of that hard line of the back of the fish or maybe just a shadow on the bottom. So they're a little bit tricky to find, um, but that's generally the water type we find them in is that cloudy, cloudy water. And a lot of times, while we're, if we're fishing for redfish and say we have on like a big seducer or something and we're just, we've been going after redfish hard, and we get into these circumstances where we start seeing cloudy water and maybe we see a black drum or two, we will go ahead and break out some of the flies that we use specifically for black drum. Um, and I will get into that right now. Fly selection for black drum. Now, the cool thing about the fly selection when it comes to black drum is that a lot of these flies are actually really good for sheep's head. And a redfish is going to hit every single one of these. So a lot of times what I would suggest is if you think you might be getting into black drum or um, you know that they've been in an area before and you have two rods on the boat, go ahead and get your favorite redfish fly on one rod and get another rod set up with something for a black drum. Um, any of the flies that I'm going to talk about are going to work for both redfish and black drum. 
Alright, so when it comes to the flies, generally I'm looking for smaller flies on either a number two or a number four hook. And next you want to use materials that have a lot of movement, like rabbit fur. And the reason you want that is the way you're going to fish these flies is you're going to basically leave them on the bottom and um, you want to where that fly is. You're not moving the fly, but the water will keep that movement going. Alright, one of the things that I need to mention when it comes to fly selection is you want flies that have a good amount of weight on them. You want these flies to sink fast to get down on the bottom. Remember, these black drum are bottom feeders, so they are going to be on the bottom looking for food. So a fly that cannot get down to them is useless. So next, uh, um, now I'm going to talk to you guys about two of my favorite, favorite, favorite black drum flies. The first one, and they're both made by a sidecast. Um, and if you don't know what sidecast is, it's a company founded by two brothers. They're based right outside of Houston, Texas. They have been super supportive of this channel and one day I actually hope to fish with these guys because they, um, yeah, I, everything that they've made, they've done, every time I talk to them, they're great. They're two great guys and, and hopefully one day I get to meet them and one day I get to fish with them. So the first fly that I'm going to talk about is the Convict Killer. Now this fly was actually uh, designed by Captain Scott Null out of Port O'Connor, Texas. Um, so the Convict Killer is mostly rabbit fur and it's this tiny little black fly and it has a lot of movement. The next fly that we really like to use is the Sightcast Straight Shooter Fly. Now, if you've watched enough of the Rough Logs, you know that Zach and I refer to it as the Fancy Crab. This thing just looks way too good to even want to throw it in the water. Um, but it is a killer and we have caught black drum on this and redfish. So I love this crab uh, It is tan and now I know I said you should use dark colors And so typically what we'll do is if we're getting rejections from black drum on the convict killer the uh, Straight shooter crab is the next one we go to If you want to put a good handful of black drum flies into your fly box but you're not sure which one to pick and choose from and you want a little bit of a variety you should go over and you should check out the sheep's head pack from Sightcast. Now the guys at Sightcast have been kind enough to give us one of these packs to give away to you guys and I'm going to have some more information on that giveaway at the end of the video. The last thing that I want to mention though with flies is um, these smaller flies, when I'm talking about these, I'm talking about if you're targeting black drum between uh, like 5 to 10 pounds, the smaller ones that you see up on the flats. Um, now I know you, you can find the 40 inch black drum up on the flats and those ones, whole different beast, they're rare. Um, Zach caught his personal best on a 2 watt black seducer. So once they get that big, just start throwing stuff at them. And you're going to have to throw it at them a bunch and they'll eat it eventually or they're just going to ignore you and swim out of your life forever and you're going to be a little upset, but that's fishing. Okay, once you start seeing a bunch of black drum, uh, it can be overwhelming because a lot of times they're going to be in big schools, you're going to see a bunch of them. Um, not always, but sometimes. So, how do you tell which drum you should go after. Um, the first kind of drum you're going to see are going to be these drum that are moving extremely fast. And honestly, don't even worry about them. Just let them go. The next kind of drum that you're going to see are going to be these slow swimming guys that are just chilled, they're relaxed. And honestly, I'd say you probably got about a 50-50 shot at catching them. And if you got a good angle where you can get the fly to them, go for it. It's definitely worth a shot. Um, now the last ones are by far, in you, they're my favorite. And these are the black drum that are tailing. If they're tailing, they're feeding, they're happy, and all you gotta do is get the fly to them, and they're gonna go after it. All right, so you have found those black drum that I'm talking about that look like they're gonna eat. How do you catch them? How do you move the fly? How do you want that fly movement to be so that you can optimize your chances of catching them? Now, it's important to take into consideration 
how a black drum eats and what they eat. They mostly feed on crabs, small shrimp, stuff that's on the bottom. They're not looking up. So you need that fly to be down low on the bottom for these fish. Next, you need to think about what that crab or that shrimp's gonna do when a big fish is coming its way. It is going to try to bury itself down in the dirt. So if those black drum are swimming in a crab and you're moving your fly, it's gonna spook them. Because that's not what that crab's gonna do. That crab's gonna try to sit as still as possible, all right? So you really gotta try to get that fly right in front of that guy's, that drum's nose so that he runs over it. Um, if you look closely at a drum, you'll see they have these kind of whiskers hanging down and that's a big part of how they find food is they use those along the bottom to feel for their food. So if you can get that fly right in front of him, what you want to do is you want to wait until he's just about over it and then you just want to give that fly the slightest little twitch. And that little twitch is going to move it just enough to hopefully trigger him to eat. Now, a lot of times it just triggers him to run away really fast. But I have found that that is the best way to trick one of these guys into eating your little black fly or your little uh, fancy crab. Now, the next thing is if they're tailing. If they are tailing, you should 100% just hit them on the head. So if you've ever watched a black drum feed, they get their nose so far down in the mud, they have grass and mud flying everywhere. And a lot of times what happens when they're doing this is they'll actually take whatever they're looking for, whether it's a crab or a shrimp, and they'll actually throw it up in the air. So the first thing that crab's gonna do once, or up in the water, in the water column. So once that crab knows he's up in the water column, he's gonna try to get back down on the ground. So by you taking your fly and bopping them in the head or really close to where their, their nose is, they're going to think that's the crab I just threw up in the air and they're going to go after it. <clears throat> um, yeah, so try to get it as close to them as possible. Um, if, you, if you find that you overshoot while they're tailing, if you overshoot them a little bit, just drag that thing in or you can either drag it along the surface and let it drop down on top of their nose, or you can drag along the bottom underneath their nose. He might be looking at it. <laughs> Over the grass. Alright guys, hopefully those tips help you guys out. If they do, please, if you put those pictures up on Instagram, tag the Skiff Wanderer so we can give you guys a shout out. I would love to help you guys to, to, to see that what, we're, what I'm talking about is helping people out. Now, like I mentioned, Sightcast has given me a sheep's head pack as well as a small sticker pack to give away. The way we're going to do this is um, I'm going to put a post up on Instagram about it tag a friend in that make sure you're following the skiff wanderer make sure you're following sightcast and next friday when i put the video out for friday i will announce the winner on an instagram story so good luck to you on that other than that Questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. Hit like, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys next week.